Hi, today we're going to talk about watersheds and we're going to start off by talking about the ecosystem in our watershed. Now, a healthy ecosystem is very important. Eco means environment. So we're talking about having a healthy environment in order for things to be able to thrive. We would define an ecosystem as the community of plants, animals, and smaller organisms that live and feed and reproduce and interact in an environment. Now an ecosystem can be as large as the Sahara Desert or it can be as small as the puddle in your backyard. There's two prefixes that we're going to talk about that will make our understanding of biotic and abiotic factors very easy to understand. So bio means life. And if you think of biology, it's the study of living things. A means not. So if something is atypical, it's not typical. Okay, it's the opposite. So our ecosystem is made of the biotic community, the community of living things, and the abiotic factors, which are the non-living things that affect it. Let's take a look at a chart and compare biotic versus abiotic because when you break it down like this, it'll be very easy to understand. If we remember that bio means life, bio is living. So biotic is our living things. When we're talking about these living things, we're talking about things like our trees, vegetation, animals, plants, fungi. Abiotic, if you remember, A means not, bio means living. So abiotic is the opposite means not living. So abiotic factors are things like the water supply, the topography, the landforms that you have in your area. Do you have mountains? Do you have ridges? Do you have plateaus? The soil, the amount of sunlight, air quality, the oxygen that's available. These abiotic factors determine the type of ecosystem you're going to have. This affects the type of plants and animals that will live there. For example, if you have an ecosystem with lots of sunlight, with good soil quality, um, healthy water quality, you'll have crops that are going to be strong and thriving. Okay, You'll have a good diversity of animals. If it's very dry in a certain area, and maybe flat, lots of sunlight, can be very hot, okay, that might indicate more of a desert type of an ecosystem. So those abiotic factors determine what type of biotic factors will live in that area. The abiotic factors also can affect how humans use that land. So it's very important that the health of an ecosystem depends on the quality of water. If you don't have a healthy quality of water, um, organisms won't be able to survive or thrive. And we want to have very diverse organisms in our ecosystem. So let's go ahead and take that into watersheds. We would define a watershed as the land that water flows across or through on its way to a river, a stream, a lake, a wetland, or another body of water. So I chose this picture here to represent the mountain when the water would flow down it. It would flow across the land in the valley and into the river. So watersheds are made up of tributaries. A tributary is a small stream or a river that flows into a larger stream or river. And if you take a look at this picture of the Chesapeake Bay watershed, which uh, spans six states, you can see all of the different tributaries all of the different smaller streams and rivers that flow together to a larger river that eventually end up in the Chesapeake Bay. Take a look at this picture right here. One is the main river and one is the tributary. Can you tell which one is the tributary, A or B? If you chose A, you're correct. So watersheds are separated by divides. If you think about a divide as a peak of a roof on a house, when it rains, the peak actually directs the flow of water to that side of the house. So if the water rains and it hits on the east side of the house, the water is going to end on that side of the yard. And a divide is very similar. 
A divide is a ridge of land at a high elevation, and it separates one watershed from another. The force of that gravity causes the rain to fall downhill and into the streams and rivers. Most of our divides are, for example, things like mountain ranges. The Blue Ridge Mountains are a major watershed divide. Water that flows on the eastern part of the mountain okay, is going to flow over towards maybe the Chesapeake Bay or towards the Abramal Sound. If it flows and it hits and lands on the western side, right there, it's going to go towards the Mississippi River. So a riparian buffer is the last big term we're going to talk about today. A riparian buffer is a planting of native uh, plants and vegetation that's near a river. So you can actually plant one, planting trees and shrubs near the river or at the edge of a stream bank. Riparian buffers are good because they slow down the runoff, which prevents bank erosion and filters pollutants, which keeps it out of the river. So the last thing that you're going to do is explore your local watershed. There's two websites here, and with the help of your teacher, she'll direct you or he will direct you toward the appropriate watershed to use.